Hi, my name is Alexis Selzer. Oh my gosh, it's strong. I'm going to read John 14, 1 through 4. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be there, to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thank you. Good morning. I wanted to use this one. Um, well, my name's David. David Peoric, and uh, I was asked to speak today because I also went on the Amor trip to Mexico, and I think I can say about two weeks later after returning from Mexico that I'm now no longer dehydrated. Uh, I think I can say that. Uh, the title for the sermon today is Casa de mi Padre, which is in Spanish, if you didn't know that. It means uh, I can say that because I spent a lot of time, two and a half days in Mexico. Uh, it's Spanish for my father's house, which we got from the verse we just heard. Uh, and I want to talk a lot about that meaning of my father's house. On a personal note, uh, I grew up as a, a pastor's son, so to be up at the pulpit speaking, I feel almost a little bit like I'm in my father's house, so that's a special moment for me as well. Uh, I want to start talking about why I chose this verse to talk about it more today. So let's read uh, the first two verses of John chapter 14. Uh, so this is Jesus speaking to the disciples at the uh, Last Supper, and he tells them, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you? You can probably start to guess why I picked this verse for this uh, specific day. We made physical rooms in physical houses in Mexico, and Jesus here is speaking about spiritual rooms in the kingdom of God that he's preparing for us to one day uh, be able to live in. But I think that there is a connection here between what's going on physically on earth and the kingdom of God that Jesus is speaking of. Uh, we got a lot from Dan on what we do in Mexico, but what happens is a group of us from, this was from our church, but other churches do it as well, we'll go down to an area like Tijuana, meet up with uh, the Amor team, and they have been in communication with a group of pastors in Mexico who tell them uh, what families in the neighborhood, in their congregations, are in dire need of stable, well-built uh, well uh, housing, and we go down and we build a house for them. Uh, now, this is a, a physical space, but one of the ways that this verse affected me after I got back from Mexico was it was a physical space, but I also believe that we participate in building a room in the Father's house when we make this house for these people, a place for God to dwell in as well as for these people to dwell in. Uh, the first time I really made that connection that something was going on here more than just making a physical house was last year. I went on the Amor trip last year as well. And uh, when we finish building the house, we have a ceremonial moment where the whole team gathers inside the house with the new owners of the home. We have a moment where we pray with them. We tell them uh, we bless them uh, and bless their house, and then we give them the keys to their new house. Uh, and it was, in, it was at that moment last year when, uh, in this case, it was Pastor Mark praying with the family that he prayed for God to come and enter this dwelling place for these people. And I realized at that point, I'm like, we didn't just build a, a house. We built a, a sacred space, a space for the Lord to dwell in. We built a house for these people, but we built a house for God. 
and he would come and have communion with these people in that home. Uh, and then I realized, well, that's a room in the Father's house. That there are many places like that. There are many houses that Amor has built. We just built two more a couple weeks ago. This room is a room in the Father's house. He is with us here, dwelling with us here. His spirit is in this room. And once you start putting those places together, you realize that there are many rooms all over the world in the Father's house. Uh, if you saw them lit up on a map, you'd see some sort of constellation of the kingdom resting upon the earth, and that we had built yet another home, and that the Lord's house constantly has additions being added to it, extra, extra rooms being put onto it, as the Lord's kingdom increases and more people are brought into his home. Uh, so that's where I got this idea that this physical space was also a spiritual place of the kingdom. Uh, but another part of this verse that was illuminated for me in Mexico uh, comes specifically in the second verse where Jesus says, I'm, uh, I'm going ahead of you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. I believe that Jesus not only went ahead to prepare a place for these people, that uh, got a house, but he went ahead of us on our trip to Mexico to prepare a room for us. And there's a very specific moment where I felt like we found one of these rooms already prepared uh, when we were on our trip. This happened on the second day in Mexico. Uh, so this was our first full work day, and it was hot. As Dan was saying, it was in the 90s, and on our work site, there was no shade. I don't, the other work site, I think it was similar, too. There was no shade. There was nowhere that you could even hunker into to get any kind of relief, and the sun was just beating down on you. And we'd had a long, hard work day through half of the day, and then it was time for lunch. And we looked around, and there was no shade or place to sit. And I remember talking to my wife. My wife, Sandy, also went on the trip. And she said that was almost possibly a breaking point for her. We'd worked so hard. We were getting dehydrated. It was so hot. If she didn't find some relief, if we didn't find some relief, it would have been hard to keep going. And she was the one, I think, that was the first one to look across the street. And as we were told, the streets aren't really streets. They're dirt roads. So it was just right there. There was a two-story house. And the bottom of the house was like one garage door. Uh, and if you got right up against the house, there was a little sliver of shade that you could sit in. And uh, a few of us went over there. And we got right up against the wall and said, well, maybe we can eat lunch here. Now, when you get that close to someone else's property, especially in a, a country that you're not familiar with, you might get a little nervous, but we took the chance. But then, once we started eating, a woman from upstairs started talking down to us, and we couldn't understand what she was saying, but my first instinct was she's asking us to leave. She says, get away from my house. What are you doing down here? Uh, so she was speaking, and I have... I took French in high school. One of these days I'll get to France, or at least to <laughs> Quebec, and maybe put that to use. But it didn't do me much good in Mexico. Uh, so I was, I, was, I was at the point where I said, she's asking us to leave. We, ne we need to go. And then my wife said, and she took Spanish in high school. Uh, my wife says, no, I think she's saying something about a table. She wants us to come to a table. And right at that moment, the woman opens up a door uh, on the first floor and starts beckoning us in. And what we see is she has a whole empty garage with a table there with seats to eat at. And she says, please come eat at our table. Come inside. And she starts cleaning off the table, and we, we come in, and uh, she opens up the whole garage door. So we're still in the shade, but we have the fresh air coming in. Uh, and all of a sudden, the place fills with children <laughs> that came from upstairs, and every corner of the room seemed to have a kitten or a puppy coming out of it, and they were doing tricks, and everybody was celebrating the fact that we were there, and was, were, they were having fun with us and enjoying it, and so instead of us just getting that sliver of shade that we needed, which was enough, the Lord gave us a bounty, right? He provided this uh, little refuge that they kept open for us the entire rest of the time, and she said, if you need to use our bathroom." Come on up and use our bathroom throughout the trip. So we, all this stuff was prepared for us. 
And they, they had no investment in it, uh, other than they were happy with what we were doing and they wanted to invite us in. I think that that is a room in the Father's house, that those people welcoming us in were welcoming us in uh, with the Spirit of Jesus. I think it was specifically prepared for us, too. I, we learned that a little bit more later, because later in that day, Dave Tom, who was on our team, hurt his leg. And he needed to get off his leg. He was worried about if it was going to get any more damage if he kept working. And I looked over later that day, and there he was in that garage, in a deck chair with his leg up, uh, elevated, with this perfect place for him to rest and recuperate. I don't know where else he would have gone. if He, he would have had to sit in the sun somewhere. But instead, Jesus had prepared a place for him. You have to kind of live in faith that he'll do that. I realize that about myself. Uh, when you're going ahead and you, don't, and you have fear of what's coming next, whenever anybody would talk to me in Spanish, at least in, in those moments, I thought that there was something wrong. I thought that that woman was telling me, get away from our house, there's some sort of conflict here. The next day, um, a man drove up in a truck and started speaking to us in Spanish, saying, someone come over here to talk to me. And, and of course, my first uh, instinct was, we're doing something he doesn't like, there's something wrong. When I got over there, I found out it was the man who lived in that house, and he said, we're leaving for the day, but we left the front door open for you so that you can come in and use the bathroom if you need to. So once again, I, my heart was in almost a state of doubt, but Jesus was in control in those moments. I needed to live in that faith that he would take care of us. Uh, not only take care of us with the minimum, but... The other thing that's good to know, at least when I read it, when I read verse 3 of this passage, Jesus says, And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. He's speaking specifically to you, to us as individuals. Jesus knows who we are. He knows what we need. And he's preparing rooms specifically for us. We needed shade. We got a room with shade. We needed a place uh, for Dave, Tom, to recover when he hurt his leg. We got a place for him to recover. We needed a bathroom. We got a bathroom. When Jesus prepares a place for you, it's specifically for you because he knows you and he loves you. There's another moment that kind of reflected this in the building of the houses. Uh, it was uh, on that second day when we finally hit kind of a big milestone of the build where we got all four walls up which is a big deal. That's the first time you can look at it and say, this actually looks like we're building a house. Uh, we had built it according to what one of the family members had told us. Now we have, uh, the walls are raked walls, which means one wall on the side of the house is taller than the other. Uh, so it has a slanted roof for the water to, to run off. And we built the house just like they told us. But then the owner came back and he said, that's the opposite of how I wanted it. I wanted the, the tall wall to go in the front and the shorter wall to go in the back. This was halfway into our second day, and we only, were only there two and a half days. Uh, so the work that would have been required would be to move those walls, which is one thing, but also one of the walls has a doorway in it and a window in it. So we would need to fill in that doorway and fill in that window and then make a doorway and make a window uh, in order to flip these. So we'd, you would understand it would be very reasonable for us to say, I'm sorry, at this point, it's just too late, and uh, we have so much work to do, you're just going to have to have the house that way. We apologize. But I remember Doug, Doug Lowe, who was leading our team, said, we can't do that. We need to give these people the house that they want, the house that's made for them. And so we switched the walls. But I think that that reflects how Jesus prepares the rooms for us. He prepares them for what we need. Sometimes I think we live in fear that God's going to force us into some life that wasn't meant for us, but he customizes uh, because of his great love for us. He, Jesus loves you and knows you and what you need. Uh, so what do we do with the fact that these rooms, both in the spiritual kingdom and in this case the, the physical world, are prepared for us? Well, I think there's a couple things. Number one, we should be comforted. The, in the context of the scriptures, that's what Jesus is doing right here. This is the Last Supper. He's just 
revealed to his disciples that, I, that he's leaving soon and that he's going somewhere they can't go. He told them, one of you is going to betray me. And then even Peter, he says, and you're going to deny me. So they're all pretty bummed out at this moment, scared. Their leader's leaving. They don't know uh, what to do next. And that's when he says, don't let your hearts be troubled. I'm going ahead of you, but there's a room for you in the Father's house. You are beloved members of the family, and you will be welcomed in to the Father's house. And I'm going ahead of you. Whatever you think is coming, up, coming ahead, I'm going ahead to prepare a place for you, whether you're going on to the book of Acts or you're going to Texas. The Lord goes before us. The other thing, of course, to know is, especially from this trip, is that we need to do the work as well. Jesus prepares the rooms, but he often uses us to prepare those rooms. When we were in Mexico, he used us to prepare that house, to build that house. Uh, in the house that we encountered across the street, wouldn't have been a room in the Father's house if those people hadn't done the work of welcoming us in, of preparing it for us. So we play a part both in giving and receiving in this. So in the end, we should live firm in the foundation that we have a loving Father in heaven that will welcome us home. And we should focus our lives now on preparing those rooms for others and preparing them to enter into that great love. Will you pray with me for a minute? Lord, we know that, that we are in your house now and that we are in your kingdom. And we just pray for your spirit to dwell in this church, in this room, and dwell in our hearts. We thank you for being a God that cares about us, that goes before us, that knows our needs and prepares just what we need. Pray that that comfort would lie upon the hearts of everyone in this room. And we pray that we could be centered in the knowledge of that great love to go out and do the work that you have prepared for us. We pray for your love to make a room in our hearts and to live there, Lord. In Jesus' name.